How are you, my friend? Good to see you, too. So you haven't left your studio, I see. You're in the same no. spot where I'm I left. Perpetually stuck in the studio, you know. I'm uh, I'm having a blast. I, I, you know, again, like we talked about last time, just trying to figure out, you know, what to do with all this downtime. And I figure spend as much time in the studio as I can. And you know, also, you know, my family wants me out of their way, so so this is my spot. How are you? Exactly. Oh, I'm I'm really well. And fortunately, we're all we're all healthy and. Uh, Maybe getting on each other's nerves a little bit, but that seems to be part of the routine here, right? Absolutely. Universally across the board, everybody's ready to get back to work. Back to I never thought I'd hear my kids say they'd be ready to go back to school, but nonetheless, they're ready to go back to school. So That's, uh, that's crazy. So um, what are you working on right now? What song are you working on right now? Um, you know, look, I... I, I did a track the night before last. It's just, I, I came up with it like six o'clock in the morning. There is no real schedule now. And as a musician, and you know, there isn't normally a schedule, but this is more abnormal than normal. So, uh, you know, did something at six in the morning yesterday, got in the studio today, started working on something else, just coming up with vibes. And it's not necessarily for 98 degrees or myself or a solo project or anything like that. Just trying to, keep the mind sharp and learn as much as I can in the studio while we have this downtime. So. Exactly. Wait, so I know you got a lot of fans here and since we're on Instagram, we should make sure that we try to say hello to uh, Disney candy and the studio collection. A lot of people wishing you a happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an old man today. I'm 40. I turned 47 today. So. Happy birthday, man. I, I can't believe that you chose to spend a little bit of your time um, with us. I, I mean, I think it just goes to show your commitment to to kids and the next generation. Maybe you're a little masochistic as well. I don't know. but <laughs> No, you know, look, man, I'm a fan of the whole thing. So, you know, anytime I can get on and be, be a supportive voice, I mean, as much as I can and, and whatever that means, I, I'm all for it. And certainly love the contest. And I know you were talking about some of the prizes before we hopped on. Do you want to go ahead and recap on some of that stuff? Yeah, yeah, I would love to. Here, let me just uh, pick this out of here, see if I can uh, actually do this. Um, hold on. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to show you the amazing prizes that we've got going on for this week um, from our sponsors, which include Audio Technica. So it's uh, Audio Technica headphones. Got this really cool Audio Technica um, podcast uh, pack that comes with that bracket that you can see there, the headphones and the USB mic. Um, you know, really, really cool, simple, easy to use stuff. Um, this is one of my favorite things from one of our favorite sponsors, Neutrik USA. They make the best connectors in the world and they do these really special custom John Lennon educational tour bus uh, connectors for us and provide all the cables and connectors for the bus. So we use these as part of the, the prizing for the contest and for this stuck at home opportunity. Then Yamaha has been the founding sponsor of the contest and of the bus. We, you know, we would not have made it this, you know, 23, 24 years uh, later uh, if it wasn't for for Yamaha Corporation of, uh, of America. Um, you know, every keyboard, every drum, every uh, guitar on board the bus. Um, and that's part of the contest prize packaging is is from them. So we have Yamaha keyboard. There's a I don't have it here, but there's a Yamaha Pacifica guitar um, that goes with the prize as well. Um, these are some of my favorites. I'm not sure if you're familiar with Genelec. They make the studio monitors. Amazing really. sounding speakers. Those speakers almost sound too good. <laughs> so exactly. And we we have these. Um, inside the uh in, inside the lenin bus and they've been an amazing amazing sponsor for uh, for the contest as well what's so cool is that look they're just these little mini ones see they're just small little portable and you carry them around in this case 
So, wow, amazing. And, you know, I don't know if a lot of people, it sounds as if I'm like endorsing these products as, as if I'm getting paid for it. No, I no. actually have used all of these products, certainly Genelec speakers. You know, you AB, when you're in the studio creating records and recording, you know, when you want everything to sound really pristine and amazing, you switch from, you know, what were these old Yamaha NS10s, which are, you know, the, the, the pedigree of not good speakers, right? And then you switch on to the Genelex and everything sounds amazing and sounds like a record i'm a big fan of their their technology and certainly would love to have a pair of those small speakers and then obviously the yamaha keyboard is that also can be used as a controller for midi or is it just straight up just to play sounds out of um i think this one that's here right now is uh, just for sounds um but one of my other favorite yamahas is the reface keyboard um that has some amazing sounds but it's also a midi controller so I love that. And then the Audio Technica stuff. I mean, when I first started out, like messing around and lugging around all these uh, big extravagant, extravagant equipment and, and all these crazy things that I was dragging around on the road before, you know, you had the technology just to do things on a laptop. Uh, I was I was using, you know, all the Audio Technica 4033s and 4067s and these microphones that are fairly inexpensive but sound very pristine uh, with uh, vocals. So I'm, I'm a big fan of all the stuff and, and kudos to you for being able to garner all those sponsors, man. That's pretty amazing. I see reason well, there as well. I mean, you know, just, just getting the, those things right there, you're set to make records. So pretty incredible. Exactly. And then my other favorite, honestly, is Otherworld Computing, OWC. Uh, they, they're probably most known for their hard drives. Um, we're really fond of these Mercury on the go pros. Um, these USB uh, C travel docks are, are really, really cool because they're tiny. And we all know you need extra ports just to you know, be able to hook up basic things. So they, they're, they've been amazing. They've all been really, really fantastic to have with us. We also have Focusrite involved. I don't have any of their product here right now. Um, but yeah, there's a tremendous package being given away, you know, every week right now. And when you enter, you're also entered into the regular John Lennon contest that has over $300,000 in cash awards and prizes. And I should mention here, let me, let me show you this. Um, if I can find it. Um, well, I'll show you, can I switch these images? I'm, I'm just trying to get better at this, Jeff. Hey, you're, you're, Lynn's ahead of me. I couldn't even, it took me 15 minutes to join the conversation, so. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm usually in that in that bucket. Um, this is our ad for Stuck at Home that Billboard just ran. All the proceeds from the contest go to help support the Lennon bus. So we've been getting a lot of support from uh, media partners who see the value during this time of, you know, of helping us out in in that way. Amazing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really good. Really good stuff. So. Um, you know, I know that um, we talked a little bit about this the, the last time, but, um, you know, I, I was wondering if you had, a, you know, an early memory as a child, an early memory of, of music being something that you wanted to be a part of in some way. Well, listen, I was just talking about this the other day with my wife. My, my, my grandmother was really into music as well. And, you know, uh, I, I, my, my, one of my first memories is, you know, she was trying to teach us how to dance. And if you've ever seen me dance, which I don't know if you have, and, and you know, look, <laughs> good for your eyes. Uh, our fans know that I, I, I can't dance, but my grandmother, nonetheless, tried to teach me how to dance. She had an old record player with tons of LPs in there, which for those folks at home don't know, they're, they're these big brown discs that you put into a record <laughs> player and, and, you know, put a needle on there. And, you know, she just, get, we, lit, we we would stay in her attic and she got me up and, and played some Bee Gees uh, Saturday Night Fever album Love stuff. It. And, you know, we just got our groove on. And, and I mean, I, it's such a vivid memory and had such an impact on me that uh, it's it's really kind of emblazoned into my brain. But uh, that's my probably my first memory of music, you know, just and, and falling in love with it right away. 
us very well and gave us everything we ever needed. But I was fortunate enough to have two sets, you know, and my grandparents were the other set. And, you know, they always took care of us and really taught us like really great values. You know, what, what we weren't getting from our parents as you resist over there and you, you know, go over to your grandparents' house and they spoil you and indulge you with, you know, treats and getting to stay up late and all that stuff. You know, you really, uh, get sort of the impact and the vibe that they had and, and they were just fantastic just really soulful people and you know I, I always felt like I was rich with you know just love and affection and all that stuff even though they might not have had all the all the finances and all the you know things that you think are important so uh, I was blessed to have that circumstance in my life love it yeah I mean a, a lot of people obviously come to music from from different paths some have it in their house some don't have it at all and have to have to figure it out uh for themselves so um how old are your kids now uh well it goes 21 19 18 14 my uh my second stepson just turned 14 last week and eight so there's a whole gaggle of them we have over here the only one that's not with us right now is my oldest daughter she's in la and i miss her dearly especially on my birthday but i'm going to spend it with the other four kids so it's pretty cool and so what's your birthday wish for today you know, look, I, I can't ask for any more. I, I mean, I'm, I'm safe. My family's safe. Uh, we haven't been, you know, directly af af affected with the affliction of coronavirus in my family in any aspect, which I'm very thankful for. We have enough food to eat. We have a beautiful atmosphere. Uh, everybody's in good spirits. So I, this is the best birthday wish I could ask for. Cool. All right. Well, we, we wish you only good health. Uh, and uh, good, good things and success going going forward. Matt wants me to ask rude questions to you, like who's your favorite ninety eight degrees member? That's uh, a really tough not, question to ask. Actually, I don't like any of those guys. That's I'll put the it out right, there right answer. Now. <laughs> that's the right answer. <laughs> you know, look, when you're with a band, it's like a second family. You, you, uh, no, I, I love all the guys in different ways. I mean, you hang out with them at different times. You know, close with Nick, close with Justin, close with Drew, all in different ways for different reasons. And when you go through the roller coaster ride that we've gone through in the business, having high highs and low lows and everything in between. It, you know, that even supersedes the sort of bond and relationship you have with your family. When you're in a group and going through this business, uh, you know, it's really hard to, to explain all the things that happen uh, throughout that process. And there's only there are only three other guys, three other people on the planet that understand that. And it's those guys. And for that reason, I have like an amazing uh, bond and affinity and respect for those guys. Uh, so, you know, it's hard to pick a favorite one. Of course. Well, how old were you all when you met? Uh, we were in our early 20s. So 21, 22. I think Drew was 19 when he, he came out and joined us in L.A. Um, so we've been around each other for most of our adult lives. And uh, it's 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 fairly interesting. Sometimes you, you can say things without saying them. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. I mean, okay. you, it's, a, it's an understood situation when you walk in and certain stimuli going on. You can just shoot each other a look and everybody knows what everybody's thinking. It's 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 pretty odd, but also very cool. Well, it has to. It, it's something that is probably a necessity, too. You need to be able to communicate when you're on stage and you, you can't use the traditional ways of communicating. For sure. I mean, obviously, if you just said things out loud, and you know, you, you couldn't get away with that kind of stuff. But fortunately for us, we know how to, you know, we've been through so much together. We, we understand each other full in and full out. It's pretty wild. Yeah. So what are you listening to these days? Like, are there any contemporary, like, hot artists uh, that are out now, young artists that, that you, you hear and you're like, you know what, I, I like that? Well, some of the some of these guys are just have that pop sensibility, and you know I'm a pop guy. So being in a boy band, you're a pop guy. You know Michael Jackson, the doo wop, the, all all the traditional pop ear candy stuff that a lot of people think is corny. Not to disparage, but against rock, I, I, you know I was raised on rock, huge rock fan from you know Metallica and Me Megadeth, and you know to pop rock stuff. But uh, you know I like the pop stuff, so. Ed Sheeran, I mean, all the obvious ones. Ed Sheeran, super talented, tons of pop sensibility there. Obviously, love Bruno Mars. I, in my mind, he's 
already a legend up there with you know the Michael Jacksons and the Princes, just such great songs and just a great vocalist and performer. Uh, and you know what? I'm you know Justin Bieber gets all this flack, but the guy's like ultra mega talented. He's got great songs and such a talented guy. I mean, you know, you can't help but not be a fan of those guys. Yeah, it make it makes sense. And you know, when you've done what you do, you mm -hmm. also know. You know, it doesn't happen by accident, you know, besides, you know, all of the, the hard work, um, you know, it, it really takes, um, you know, a, a God given talent on top of, of all of that work. And the, but uh, at the end of the day, the work is probably even more important from what I've well, seen. I think it's a combination of all yeah. of it. I mean, you'll see you'll see occasional occasionally there'll be an artist that you, you can tell they don't have a ton of talent or whatever. And they, they might have gotten. Uh, you know, been spoiled with the riches of having a great hit handed to them and they've recorded it, and, and you know, you know and the proper backings there. But, but the ones that rise to the top, you know, that saying that cream always rises to the top, those guys have a ton of talent. And it is, it is in conjunction with a ton of hard work because if you don't do the hard work, you'll see a, a plethora of talented people come across. And if they don't put that hard work in there, they don't stay humble and, and kind of embrace that humility aspect and, and continue to reinvent themselves in that, that arduous process of working really hard, they'll fall off and disappear. You're like, what, what happened to that person? I met them. They were so talented. They were on this radio show. And then, boom, they're, all of a sudden they're gone. Well, they're, then there's something missing there. And it's usually work ethic. And, you know, and occasionally you'll run into those obstacles and hurdles of not having the proper team management labels or whatever. But, you know, the culmination of all those things are is like essential and very important. Exactly. So, as you know, with the John Lennon Educational Tour Bus, we have a mobile studio that travels around the U.S. There's another one that's in Europe. Um, I want to make sure everybody, you know, is aware. I have this photo up now of you at a stop that we made in Vegas a couple of years ago anyway. Um, and we were at a school doing what we normally do, which is creating an original song and a music video in a single day, right? So the students come on um, and they get to work with the onboard engineers who live there. And we've had the great fortune of having a lot of artists like yourself who have participated, who give of their time. And in your case, you spent a lot of time on board. You became a real part of that session. Um, and it's something that they'll never forget. And the videos are all up on YouTube. So I wanna urge everybody to go and, uh, and check it out. Um, also, again, the contest for those of you that are songwriters or are friends with songwriters or bands, um, singer songwriters, please check out jlsc.com. I have it pinned here. Um, so you can go and check out what we're running. We have a uh, stuck at home opportunity with a deadline on uh, this Sunday. And uh, you really got to hear some of the songs. They're, they're really, really amazing. Really great stuff. Well, just incredible. You know, look, I, I was thoroughly impressed by the staff that was there. I mean, those young people that were, you know, just seamlessly, you know, going through the process and flying through it and technically savvy and then, you know, also creatively savvy. But what was also impressive are these kids that just had that sort of hunger and thirst to get in there and just knock it out, right, and create a song. I mean, I, I expected everybody to be a little bit shy or a little bit apprehensive, but, you know, it was like magic. When, when we walked in there and everybody sort of seamlessly worked together and, and congealed and created this cool thing, and, and at the rate that they did it, it was thoroughly impressive. So those of you that haven't checked out the John Lennon bus, I mean, go online, check it out, and certainly the sponsors are all of all of pedigree, all of studio quality stuff, and just an impressive program. And and for it to be around so uh, for such a long time is a testament to to how successful and 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 how necessary and needed the program is. Yeah, and you know the truth is, people those sponsors that are involved, you know they're you know they obviously want to uh, you know get exposure. But the neat thing in music product companies that I think is unique is that most of them are, you know, really passionate about music to begin with. You know, they're musicians uh, often themselves. And, you know, John Lennon is uh, a figure that, you know, rings really, really clear and true for so many people. And so having the connection to John um you know, kind of sets everybody up for being positive. That's what I'm getting at is, you know, when you come on board the Lennon bus, 
you're excited because it's you know a world class one of a kind studio but the extra little bit of magic there it's it's john and it's what people bring to the they know that he was a peacemaker they know that he was a passionate activist that he was a, you know a great artist um and you know there was also something fun and whimsical about how he and yoko went about being activists you know they weren't uh, negative they you know they didn't they didn't berate you into wanting to do the right thing. Um, they wanted you to have a little fun, to giggle, um, to to think. So anyway, that's that's what's cool about being associated with something that has John's name on it is what people bring to that. Yeah, no question about it. I mean, and and look, how many songwriters and that have that sort of vibe have developed and, and popped up since they're not many. So you're talking about a one of a kind type of person that you know sort of it has you know lent his name to this this process and to, to such a good uh cause it, it's it's pretty incredible and again always honored to be a part of it i mean i appreciate you asking me to come back on and and certainly like anytime i can in, be a part of like endorsing the message that you just sort of laid out for everybody and what it's about i'm proud and happy to be a part of it and, and honored to be even associated with it and again that experience i had there was like none other. I sit in the studio all day long, but I'm by myself. I can't get around young people right now because of the quarantine issues and everything that's going on. So it really sort of, you know, it, 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 it lets you kind of reflect and go, wow, you know, when things get back to normal, and hopefully they will sooner than later, you know, it gives you a certain appreciation for it. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah, we would love to have you back on board for uh, for another session. Um, we're cooking up some fun things um, with the contest. Uh, maybe you can help us announce one of the winners in the future at, at some point. And, you know, the other thing is I would love to just get I'd love to hear a little something out of your studio one day, you know, just push play and give us a little idea. Yeah, of what, I can do it right now. On. You know what? I was working okay. on this one, this one last night. I don't know how good the quality of the sound's going to be in here, but this is something that I just started doing last night. Can you hear it okay? Yeah. dramatic uh kind of pop song you know in the tradition of rodney jerkins or somebody like that i don't know if, if, if i hear know who he is he's amazing yeah. he's done a ton of hits for like michael jackson and brandy and monica and yeah so uh, destiny's child so it's sort of the, you know i'm heavily influenced by him i'm one of, i'm a big fan of, of his as a producer super catchy yeah i love it and so what what are you working in there are you that uh, the, the program is called studio one okay so Presonus, uh, which is another great company. Um, you mentioned Focus, right? Which is a tremendous company. Universal Audio, of course. Yamaha is one of your sponsors, and again, big fan of the, all of the Audio Technica stuff. Um, but Presonus has a new DAW digital audio. Well, it's not new, but it's it's new to me. Uh, digital mm -hmm. audio workstation. So traditionally, working Pro Tools, Logic. Big fan of Logic. Have got into Ableton, Ableton, whatever. Uh, is the proper way to pronounce that. But I've, I've become very, a very big fan of the persona stuff because it's drag and drop. So if you have a VST or a synth that you want to use, and you know, I had some like little John synths going in there, uh, you know, I just drag it right onto the screen. You don't need to call it up and dial it up and have it come up. You just drag everything onto the screen. If there's a loop, I like you drag it. And so it's the uh, learning curve on it is very intuitive. So, uh, I mean, you literally can fly through tracks and ideas, 
you know, certainly mixing is another element that you get back into later and all that stuff. But um, as far as like scratching stuff out, I'm a huge fan of, of their stuff. Love it. Okay. Um, I want to, before we go, we have one minute left. I, you know, I just want to remind everybody to go over to JLSC.com. You can also vote right now on the Lennon Awards. Um, these are our best songs of the last year. Um, you can, I think, uh, yeah, the last day of, uh, of April is the last, uh, is the last day of the Lennon Awards voting. Um, if you vote, you are registered to win a Yamaha Pacifica guitar just for voting. Um, but the real thing is to go over and listen to some amazing, amazing songs. It's a particularly good crop. And Jeff, if you're not doing anything, you should do it too. Maybe you'll hear something that, uh, inspires something or you want to maybe, uh, get together with a, a struggling up and coming writer or somebody who's actually, uh, you know, been working for a while. We have all kinds of writers really mixed in there. Fantastic. I'll absolutely check it out. Hey, look, yeah. man, I appreciate you having me on uh, during this time. I'm glad you're, you're looking healthy. You're looking great. Everybody go check out the, the website, uh, listen to the music. The last day for voting is right now. I see, I've see. i been seeing the birthday wishes come along. I'm, I'm very non-tech savvy with regards to the phone. So I've, I've, see, I've seen things fly by. I appreciate the wishes. And thanks a lot for having me, man. I appreciate it. I look forward to like seeing you in person one of these days. Exactly. So, so happy, happy birthday. Everybody loves you. Feel good. And imagine peace. Happy birthday, Jeff. Thanks, man. All right. Take care.